Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today I'm doing an update on my EDC video. Now, the lovely stuff you see before you is last year's uh, EDC, and I've decided to do it a little bit differently. I'm, I'm just upgrading certain things. I'm kind of finessing, so to speak, my everyday carry. Uh, now, of course, before I get into it, I'll do a quick wristwatch check, and I'm wearing the 1945 Amiga Pilot's watch. Look at those blued hands! Oh, yeah, it's um, still have it, uh, and I've got it on the uh, the original Admiralty Grey NATO strap. If you if you know the history of the NATO strap, this was the uh, the first color it came in was this, and it's actually by the same company. I'm not sure if it was Focus. There you go, Phoenix. And Phoenix actually produced the first NATO strap, so this is a mil-spec Phoenix NATO strap. In my opinion, they make the best NATO straps. Not just historically accurate, a bit like the uh, the World War II watch, but also the quality is second to none. So the first thing I'm going to change is my everyday carry knife. Now, this is my Benchmade, and yes, I've said it correctly, I, I do refer to it as my Benchmark. This is the Mini Griptilian. Absolutely love this knife. It's kind of killed off the old Sage 1 for me. And I have it on the uh, Memento Mori Paracord there. It's a nice compact size, the quality. Um, it's perfect. However, it is a tad little bit over tactical, overly tactical, I should say. I wanted something a little bit more gentlemanly, a little bit more traditional, especially for more formal occasions. It just feels a bit strange going to, to, to like a posh restaurant with this in your pocket. Um, for every day, yeah, fine, casual, absolutely, I, I adore this knife. However, I'm gonna upgrade it with this. So this is a traditional Laol knife, or some parts of France, uh, pronounce it actually with the G. There's, they, they can't really decide um, themselves, but I believe most the predominant pronunciation is Layol, and I've you know butchered it a thousand times. So I found this beautiful, stunning piece by Forge de Layol, which is one of the um, companies from the region. To be a real Layol knife, you have to be made in this tiny part, the Aveyron. Uh, region of France, um, the name comes from the village of Layol, where they were first originated from. And they've become a luxury product, uh, which is strange because originally they were shepherd's knives, and you can see the little, uh, the famous rosary cross there to bring the shepherds good luck. So I went for a juniper handle, which is a lovely wood. It has a really nice color to it. And I believe over time, it also gives off a nice scent it has a very old world charm. And of course you can get these in a wide variety of styles, different styles of wood. My older one had a stag horn handle, which is even more traditional, you could say. So the steel is a T12 steel, which um, has a really nice shine to it. And the reflections are completely undistorted. You also get a lifetime guarantee with Forge de Leol, uh, which is something that, you know, the forgeries and imitations will never be able to offer. So we have dual solid brass bolsters with a stainless steel spine, which is hand engraved. Each knife maker has their own style of engraving. This is, this is like a signature on the back of the knife. And of course, that iconic uh, Napoleonic B. If I show you the little leaflet I got with the, um, there you go, there's the small village, Layol, there you go, um, and there's a map, so it's in the southern part of France, and you can see all the, the detail about the, um, and there's the craftsman, uh, the, the actual knife makers, so that there's 170 uh, operations involved in making these knives, um, and you can you can really feel the quality. I think this is an absolute bargain. I know this is quite expensive for some. This was only 115 dollars. Uh, from I'll li I'll leave links to everything included down below. What was their name? Proper Moose. The Proper Moose. Original, guaranteed, France. Beautiful. And you can see that the brass does tarnish over time. Uh, that's uh, the only little downfall, but it can easily be made, um, you know, you, you can easily polish it away. So the overall length 
fully open is uh, 17.5. The blade, I believe, is uh, 7.5. And then when closed, it's about 10 centimeters. So just to compare to my old Layol, this is obviously far smaller, much easier to carry, less offensive, and definitely more classy. And I love the brass because it'll match my signet rings, um, and a few other things which uh, you'll see in just a moment. So legend has it that the shape, uh, that curved line of the, the knife itself was inspired by a woman's leg. Uh, now how French, <laughs> how French is that? Uh, it's wonderful, it's, it's very endearing. And I have to say in comparison to my older or my previous Layol, the attention to detail, the quality of engraving certainly is far superior with this particular brand. So really, really chuffed to bits with that. Uh, and guys, I'll leave an article down below on how to recognize a real Layol knife because there's tons of forgeries and imitations, especially coming from China, which, you know, they're just horrendously made. And um, yeah, it's worth it getting the real thing, something you can hand down the generations. Now, the next thing I'm gonna upgrade is my wallet. This is from Opperman. They have since changed their name to Carl Friedrich. Um, they are, actually, let me get the new one in. So here's my new one. And as you can see, I've gone for cognac this time. I wanted to match my Palissy bag that I bought from uh, Carl Friedrich. There you go. I've also, this time, I've gone for personalization. So they've actually embossed it and I've gone for gold, yellow gold again, in keeping with um, the theme. Uh, the pinky ring and a few other items which you'll see. So I, I love Carl Friedrich. I, I'm a big fan, you know, when I, when I buy leather goods, bags, wallets, they are always my first choice. I love the clean design, the quality of the craftsmanship. These are handmade in Italy uh, using the finest vachetta leather, which is uh, smooth. It ages beautifully as you use it more. Well, as you can see in my old wallet, uh, it still looks great. It, it just adds to the character. And you can really tell the quality. I, I, here's some telltale signs. It has a single stitch, um, single filament thread, which is really nice and thick and substantial. And look at the edges. Very, very thick. Um, you can really tell the quality of the leather craftsmanship by these tiny little details. Now these are around 90 bucks and I think it's well worth it because they will last a lifetime. I've upgraded really, um, not that I needed to, mainly because I just wanted to have all my leather goods matching. Um, and now I'm searching for a cognac uh, colored um, leather belt, but that's another story. So we have uh, seven card slots. Uh, let me just move the cash. I usually take about around two, uh, $100. So as you can see, Designed in London, handmade in Italy, uh, with genuine Tuscan. Oh, it's Tuscan leather. But what I love about them is the quality. It's tastefully done. It's classic. It's going to age well. Um, so you have seven slots and then an exterior slot uh, for the most frequently used cards. So in my case, a Metro card, so you don't have to open it. So this is the slim vertical bifolding wallet. This is called the Swanfield. Again, I'll include links down below. And they do ship worldwide, by the way, guys, because I know they are based in London. They have fantastic other products. Do check them out. So that's my new wallet. And oh, God, yeah, I'm really chuffed with that. Moving on next to another familiar favorite. It is, of course, the Parker Jota. Now, this came out last year. This is the official Urban Gentry Park Jota. You can find these on the Urban Gentry uh, website, the online boutique. However, I wanted something, well, you guessed it, yes, in yellow gold. Now, unfortunately, this is not an Urban Gentry special. Uh, you can find these on Amazon, eBay, etc. They're around about, I think about 16 bucks. Uh, and again, I wanted something a little bit more formal. Your classic, um, you know, clicky, your standard ballpoint, that hugely iconic arrow. And I love how it's in a, in a polish and then we have satin. A little bit of detail there. So really, really happy with that. It's a design icon as used uh, by my grandfather and um, featured on Mad Men. Uh, the stainless steel one I have as well. I, I got a whole collection of these now. So it's, a, it's been a design icon for 60 plus years now. So um, yeah, that's my new 
Parker Jota. When it comes to a portable torch or a flashlight, as uh, my American cousins say, uh, I always go for this little thing, this little darling thing, this if it will ever focus. Come on, let's focus. There we go. So we have the Streamlight MicroStream. I love this little thing. I'm not changing this. I would like to find something a little bit more elegant, less tactical, but for every day it's perfect. It slips in the back of the pocket. It's tiny, powered by one um, AAA battery. It's about, I think, about 16 bucks. You can buy them at Walmart, Amazon, all the rest of it. I'll leave links down below as normal. 28 lumens. Uh, it's shock resistant, water resistant. Got a little clip, which um, is very useful. It's really nice. Um, just a simple, compact light. Yeah, so I'm not changing that. Although, guys, if you have any suggestions for something preferably gold tone, I know that's ridiculous, but something a little bit more elegant, suggestions in the comments, please. Something else that is not changing is definitely my, uh, it, my little earbuds there. These are from Sennheiser. These are the CX... Uh, what were they? The CX... I think they're the CX... 302, uh, amazing, amazing little uh, headphones, uh, sorry, earbuds. The frequency response on these is about 42 to 17K hertz. They're wonderful. The, the low end especially does bass tones justice. And the only negative, guys, is do be careful if you buy these um, wearing them on the street because they cancel out, you know, and, um, the outside noise very, very effectively. So it can be a little bit dangerous. Um, I love the little pouch, you get a little pouch, 30 bucks. I love Sun Sennheiser, or Sin, how do you pronounce it? Zen, Zenheiser. We used to have their headphones at music school and I've just stuck with them ever since. And I always carry a, a little pair of extra earplugs. Um, they're honestly, they always, always come in useful. And I use a little standard um, SanDisk MP3 player. I know a lot of you guys always ask me, why do I use an MP3 player when I can use my phone? Um, it's simply storage because my opera, especially my Wagner operas are so long. Some of them go on for four hours. I just buy these cheaply and I have different colors for different things. So I have my blues on my drum and bass on one, my operas on another, audio books on a different color. So it's just, for, it, for me it works. Um, and I free up more space on my phone for taking pitch, you know, wrist shots <laughs> as we do. And talking of phones, yes, I have an iPhone um, and the case I've gone for is also from Carl Friedrich. This is a beautiful cognac color. You can see why, you can see the, the theme why I've upgraded my phone case. And by the way, this is also a really nice high quality leather that this, my God, if only you could feel this guys, it's uh, very luxurious. So another thing that has remained the same is this, which I believe I can't remember the name of it, uh, but uh, here we go. There we go. It's actually, it's actually written on it. The Night Eyes, a clip to hang, have your keys on. Also doubles as a bottle opener. Very, very useful. I always have a secondary knife. Victorinox is usually my number one choice because they're compact, high quality. The scissors, you get tweezers, toothpick, everything you can't get really in the Layol um, is here. I've always had something a little bit more fun, something to add some personality. And at Christmas, I received uh, a big, I'm a big fan of Lego, and I also love the Hannibal Lecter films. So I was given this little Lego Hannibal Lecter. So that will be on my keys now. I'll probably take the, uh, I'll take the plane off. Okay, my next thing I'm gonna upgrade is, you guys know I'm a massive fan of per sole i've worn them for, for decades they are my luxury handmade italian sunglasses of choice however i'm making a slight change i mean look don't get me wrong i'll always still love per sole. i have many many sunglasses those are just my number one choice but i was sent these and these are from proof eyewear they actually have a very very good cause i'll i'll include a shot of me wearing them they they do suit me and normally i don't go in for that kind of style they also come in a very nice box 
the governor. There you go. <laughs> Very kind of them to, 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 to do that. They've even include, included the uh, the Wolford lion holding the hourglass, which is the symbol of the um, channel, obviously. However, what intrigued me about this brand and what really inspired me to wear them, well, first of all, glasses are great. They suit me. I love them. But they are made entirely out of sustainable materials and a portion of each watch sale goes to charity. Uh, they help people with deteriorating eyesight in India and Haiti and they fund cataract surgeries and they go out and they help. There's a, there's a great video all about them on YouTube. They actually go out there and they do volunteer work. Yeah, and I just thought, yeah, it's helping a good cause and you look stylish doing it, so why not? So I guess we should really talk about the watch and my most worn watch last year no surprise for every day was the SKX, although you, you guys know I'm a massive watch slut and I, I change my watch several times a day. But generally, my, for every day, you know, the day date complication, it being a diver, this is my modded SKX. I'm having another one made, which you guys will see very, very soon. However, I'm going to upgrade this. And one of the downfalls of the Cerakoting coating is you can't wear it with the new. Valor strap. So this is the Valor strap I designed myself in collaboration with Wrist Candy Watch Club. There you go. Signed, the Urban Gentry. So the name comes from the inscription on the Victoria Cross. Now, one of my ancestors died in battle and uh, earned the Victoria Cross. And the ribbon on the Victoria Cross is that crimson red. So partly inspired by the James Bond strap as well, I wanted to include little nod to my ancestor and hence why it became called the Valor Strap. And it goes without saying that the Rolex Explorer is now my favorite everyday watch. I love its versatility. I love the fact I can wear it on the Valor Strap. And I designed the Valor Strap specifically to be, well, as, as compatible with as many watches as it could be. So this now unequivocally is my favorite Rolex. In my opinion, the, the, the perfect everyday watch. So there we go. I still always carry a secondary NATO strap. Um, olive is my go-to color. I just love olive NATO straps. I also use them as bookmarks. Very, very useful. Okay, next is uh, my necklace pendant. I always wear... Um, well, I have a whole selection of pendants. This, the little ruby cross, I love gemstones. I do collect them, in fact, and rubies is, is one of the most ancient. This is a little antique cross I, I picked up, 14 karat yellow gold. They symbolize, their metaphysical properties are for passion, they're a protector, and for prosperity. They're, they're called the queen of gemstones because often attributed to nobility and royalty, certainly in history from antiquity onwards. They have a beautiful, I mean, look at the way the light, I'm not sure if you can see that, but the way the light uh, passes through them, it's, it's, they're just incredibly elegant. Um, however, I'm, I'm changing this and my preferred style of chain, uh, this is a box, a rectangular box style uh, which has a very nice silky, the movement of it is very nice and, and, and comfortable. I sometimes go for the Byzantine link, which is um, quite an ancient style of chain as well. However, I'm going to upgrade this because I was given an absolutely beautiful gift. Let's just take the pendant off and that's what I love about pendants. You can take them off depending on your mood. So I was given this. Now this was sent in by a fan of the channel. I'm not sure if I should mention your name. I don't want to offend you, just in case you didn't want to share your name. So this was uh, made by a professional jeweler. And as you can see, you got the Wolford Lion, or the symbol of the uh, channel. Now, the newer symbol now, because it's been updated. On the back we have TGV. Yeah, I was speechless when I got this. And if you're watching, thank you so much. Please do email me. You didn't leave me your address. So I really wanted to write to you and just thank you again uh, for such a beautiful gift. Actually, I might even wear it with the cross. It might make a nice, yeah, I think I'll do that. Um, yeah, uh, now I've got the lion and TGV on the pendant. I feel it's slightly unnecessary to have the ring as well. You guys know I designed my own signet rings. This is the TGV monogram. I'm in the process of having another one made with the, the uh, more traditional with the, my family crest on it. I've done countless videos about this. My recommended jewelers of choice in England, uh, they 
classic Oxford style. I always wear a signet ring. Sometimes I have gemstones. This is a black star sapphire, which has that beautiful iridescent. Sorry, it's not focusing. Beautiful iridescent. This is why I need the white gloves. I miss the white gloves. The beautiful iridescent um, quality to it. For me, it's a very important tradition to carry on. But if you if you haven't inherited this tradition, you can always start your own legacy. And it's just another thing that was on your person that you can hand down to the next generation. So why not, you know, start your own legacy, d design your own. This is the one with the full coat of arms. So it's not just the lion. The lion's actually in the, in the shield there. So this, this is done in the European style. Uh, this is an antique. Uh, that was given to me, so I'm gonna go with that one. So that's it guys, that's my updated EDC for 2018. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm loving the, the, the gold tone theme that's that's starting to, to happen. Um, also the cognac leather, I think, you know, it now all works together. I do want to get one of Carl Friedrich's the case for the laptop um, case, um, which they also do. That'll be next, and that'll also be in Cognac, so you can see <laughs> you can see where it's going. But yeah, absolutely chuffed. I'll leave the links to everything included uh, in the description. Uh, let me know any recommendations, especially when it comes to torches or what you carry on your EDC in the comments below. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.